So in today's video, let's talk about proxies and a feature in DaVinci Resolve that's gonna make working with proxy clips a whole lot easier. Now, before we get into this tutorial, let's go over a little bit of background on what proxies are. And so in general, proxies are basically smaller, lower resolution versions of your original files. And so these original files could be 4K files, 6K, 8K, they might be at higher bit depths, they might be at 10 bit, 42, they might be raw files. Any of these file types are significantly larger and they're gonna be a lot more taxing on your computer. It's gonna require more processing and power, which means your overall video editing workflow is gonna be slower if you are using these original files. So that's the huge benefit of using proxy files or proxy clips. And then this doesn't just apply to your individual use. Say for example, you are working in Teams. So in this case, it's really not ideal for you to try to send over these really large files, especially if you have larger projects that might have gigs or maybe terabytes worth of data. In this case, you might wanna send them project files with these proxy clips. And at the same time, if maybe you had a video editor that you wanted to edit all your videos, you don't necessarily have to send the original unless you're doing some type of color grading. You can just go ahead and send them the proxy files and that's gonna overall really speed up the workflow when it comes to video editing. Okay, so now we're actually gonna be heading over to our desktop and the feature here is available on DaVinci Resolve 18 and after. So if you're not using that version, then this won't be available to you. So once we're on a desktop and you install DaVinci Resolve 18 or above, one thing you'll notice underneath the Blackmagic Design folder is this new feature called Blackmagic Proxy Generator. And if you are using the free version, you're gonna get Blackmagic Proxy Generator Lite. And if you're using the studio version, you're gonna get the full version of this proxy generator. And as far as I know, they basically work pretty much the same. The studio version is gonna give you a few different options. And if you are on Mac, there's also gonna be different options here as well. And the first thing that it's gonna ask you is to select a folder that you actually want to monitor for proxy files. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that. So you could kind of see some of the options that are available. And so at least here on Windows and on the light version, you're gonna see three different file types that you could choose. You could create proxies in H.264, 420, have res, 1080p. You could have it in H.264, 8-bit, 420, 1080p, or in H.265, 8-bit, 420, 1080p. And so the lowest resolution is this one right here at the half res resolution. And that's the one I'm gonna choose because at least for me, I wanna get the fastest performance possible on my computer. And then once you've gone ahead and chosen the resolution that you want by default, you can now add your watch folder. So basically, DaVinci's gonna look in this folder to see if there's any files. And if there are, then it's gonna go ahead and create proxies of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a folder. So in this case, I did create a folder for all my proxy files. So here is DaVinci Resolve proxy files. I'm gonna do select folder. And then once you have that, we could go ahead and go into the folder and I'm gonna show you an example of what happened. So right now, there's nothing there. But if I go ahead and click on start, it's gonna go ahead and look for any files in that folder. So right now, there's nothing there. And so every few seconds, DaVinci Resolve is gonna look into that folder automatically. So I do have some 4K files here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and open this one up and I'll show you that these are 4K files. So here, this is a 4K file and this one is also a 4K file. So you can see there. And then uh, each one of these files, they're a little over 200 megs. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this into that folder. So I'm gonna copy both of these and then go back to my proxy folder and I'm gonna go ahead and paste them. And now once that happens and DaVinci Resolve sees that, it's gonna go ahead and process these files. So once it's done processing, you'll see a completed status. And if we actually go back to the folder, you'll see a new folder called proxy. And within that, you are gonna see the proxy files and these are gonna be smaller versions of them. So we'll look at details. And now from 200 something megs, it's 16 megs and 11 megs respectively. So definitely much smaller than the original, which is the whole idea. And another great thing with this new proxy feature is that 
It's gonna do this automatically as I mentioned a little bit earlier, but if you want to actually force this to start running, you could always click on stop, drop some new files in and they'll go ahead and click on start and that'll go ahead and process these newer files. So once you have these available, you can now use them in your project. So another really great benefit of this new way of doing proxy files is that you save a ton of time because previously you would typically have to wait until these proxy files or clips are generated before you could start working on it. And for files that are much larger with higher resolutions, this could take typically hours before you could actually start working. But in this case, the Blackmagic proxy generator works in the background so you could start video editing right away. And so if we head over to DaVinci Resolve, I'm gonna show you how this works. So once your proxy files are generated, you could simply either drop the originals in your project timeline, and it's gonna be able to start using the proxy clips right away. And one thing that is important is, if you are on the edit tab or edit page, you'll have to go up here to playback and go down here to proxy handling and make sure that you prefer proxies if available, or you could also choose the camera originals or you could disable proxies altogether. So if I were to drop this file down here into my timeline, you'll notice something. You'll notice that there's this icon here, which means that you are using proxies. And so if you actually turn that off, if we go here to playback and then choose prefer camera originals, then that icon would disappear and you are now using the originals, which is gonna be really important if you actually wanna do color grading or you wanna do compositing. So basically, if it's really important for you to use the original high resolution, high color bit depth versions, then that is gonna be important. And you could also disable proxies if you wanted to. But in this case, I'm gonna leave it at preferred proxies whenever they are available. So that is the first thing. And so the second really important part with this proxy feature is how does DaVinci Resolve know to link it to a proxy file? Well, if you actually look in the proxy file folder you set up, DaVinci Resolve is gonna look for a proxy file with the same name. So in this case, I have the name of the originals here. And then if I actually look at the proxy files, it is the same name, it's just the extension is different. So that's how DaVinci Resolve knows which files to link to your original. But what if you actually didn't want all your original files to be in your proxy folder, which really makes sense because obviously you're gonna be working on multiple projects and it doesn't make sense for all your original files to be in here as well. Well, you can do that. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these right here. And what I'm going to do is drop over the same files, but it's gonna be from a different location. So I have it here in this 4K folder. So I'm gonna drop it here in my edit. And then I'm gonna bring it down here to the project timeline. But the one thing that you notice is it no longer has that icon where it shows that it's linked to a proxy clip. So the way in which you do that is you're gonna go ahead and go up here to your clip. You can right click on your mouse and then go down here to relink proxy media. And in this case, you're gonna go ahead and choose the proxy version of your original file and then open. And now you're gonna go ahead and see your icon showing that it is now linked to a proxy clip. Now, I currently do not know of an automated way to do that, but if you do know of a way to do it automatically, then go ahead and leave it in the comments area below. But this is a really important step because in this case, you don't have to have all your original files in the same folder as your proxy files. And so another thing is, what if you have a whole bunch of different clips and you don't remember which ones are using proxy files versus which ones that don't? Well, there is an easy way for you to see this. If you actually go here to your media tab, you could change the view to see whether or not it is using proxy files. So right now we have our default view right here, thumbnail view, but if you go to list view, you are able to see more details. And in this case, I wanna see whether or not there is a proxy version being used. And if you don't have these options available, you could go up here, right click on your mouse, and then you could choose uh, what columns that you want to see. So in this case, I have proxy and proxy media path. So in this case, you could easily see whether or not your files are also using proxy versions. And now let's go ahead and look at some additional details of things that could happen whenever you are using these proxy files. So say for example, you actually had it where you wanted to use the camera originals, okay? So you're not using the proxy version. But what if you accidentally deleted or removed the original versions of your files? So if we're gonna go down here to this proxy folder 
And then let's just say I'll go ahead and delete this. So if you delete this, then DaVinci Resolve won't see the original, but instead it's gonna go ahead and use the proxy version. So as you can see, there is the icon. And so in this case, you could still work on your project. It just won't be using the original. And if for some reason you decided to not use proxies, then this won't be found because it's no longer in that location. So that is something that's really important for you to understand if in case you were to remove the original files and you wanted to use the camera originals. Protect your online privacy and keep data brokers from selling your personal information by using DeleteMe, the number one privacy information remover service since 2010. Sign up today and get 20% off your first order. For more information, check out the affiliate link in the description area below. And then another nice feature that this provides is your ability to delete proxies from this interface. So if you were to delete proxies here, it's going to delete all the proxy files that you currently have. And I think this is a lot more convenient than having to go into the folders where all your proxies are stored and then freeing up space that way. Plus, if you wanted to, you could also extract proxies from a different folder. And so that's just a really nice convenient touch that DaVinci Resolve now provides. And so the last thing I want to talk about is what if you wanted to share your project and proxy files with other people on your team, or maybe you wanted to send this off to a video editor. So this is really easy to do. So the first and obvious thing is you need to make sure that you do have proxy files or proxy clips available. So in this case, you don't need to send them the original files if they don't need it. So you're going to have to send them this first. And then secondly, you're going to have to send them the project file. And you could do that by go up here to your project, go to file and then export project. And you could save this as a DaVinci Resolve project file. It is saved with a .drp extension. And that is all you have to do. So that is it today on DaVinci Resolve's new proxy generator. I think this is a really great feature that's going to save not only you a lot of time, but also people on your team or other people who are going to be doing your video editing for you. So if you actually had any thoughts on this or any other ways in which you can use this, be sure to leave in the comments area below. And if you did want to see more of my DaVinci Resolve tutorials, tips, and tricks, I will leave a playlist in the description area as well. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share like, and subscribe. And if you're a creative geek like me, and you want to get exclusive access to more content that I don't put out here publicly on my YouTube channel, then join my Goal Content Creators Group, where you're going to get content like this and more for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Goal Content Creators Group.